back, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Monique with Open Gate Quilts, and we are here for our live Thursday night broadcast. Say hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hope everybody's doing well. Before I forget, don't forget to be safe this weekend. It looks like lots of storms are coming all over the country from what I can see. So be safe, and if you can stay home, stay home, because we're supposed to be getting a bunch of snow. I was hoping we wouldn't, but I'm thinking we are. And then it's supposed to be getting super cold. But anyway, tonight we are going to be going over my latest in American Patchwork and Quilting Quilts and More, the dog bed that I designed. It's called Top Dog. And this is actually designed for Zed, who we left the door open so he could come and see us, but they're ignoring us right now. They're not coming downstairs. <laughs> they're like, we, we haven't been down for ages. So they're getting kind of mad at us. But anyway, this is the dog bed that I made for Zed and I'm gonna show you how to put it together. But before we do that, we always want to make sure that, what do we do? We like, share, and comment. But tonight, I am going to have you comment about something else because we're going to talk a little bit about color. And um, so what I want you to comment about is what is your favorite color that you use in quilting? Not the favorite color that you have, but your favorite color. It could be the same. But my favorite color is pink. As you can see, I wear a lot of pink. But the color that I use the most in quilting, that I love to use in quilting, is red. And so if you look over here, this, da -da. Da -da, this is actually one of my first quilts that I designed. It's called Courtyard. And um, I used a combination, obviously, of black and red and cream. But I love reds in a quilt. I just think they just make the quilts pop and they just, I gravitate towards them, I use them all the time. So this is Courtyard, so that's my favorite color that I use in quilts. I also like to use black, and I do like blue. There's not a lot of colors I don't like, but my favorite, I think, go-to color is red. So that's what I want you guys to comment about. Then we have a big giveaway today. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> Come on over here and I'll show you. We got in the mail yesterday Aurafil thread. Woo! It's so awesome. So this actually is the giveaway. Everybody, everybody, oh, I wish everybody could. One lucky person is going to get all these wonderful fabrics. Or fabrics. Oh my gosh, when I'm thinking fabrics, I'm thinking <laughs> these wonderful threads. Now this is the Aurafil thread, which I absolutely love. And I coordinated these colors to go with Coastal Chic Batiks. So these all go nicely. Look how beautiful they go with the Coastal Chic Batiks. And these are, wait, gotta get my glasses on. Yeah, yeah. What's the weight? What's the weight? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There are, I believe, a thousand yards in here. So there's a lot of thread. So this is the special giveaway. And the giveaway is to one lucky person who comments and says what their favorite color to work with in quilting is. And you gotta share too. And way. share. And make sure you share. But make sure you comment about that. And as an added bonus, because these two fabrics go so beautifully with these threads, I'm going to give you a fat quarter, that one special person, what? fat quarter of those two fabrics. What so, kind of quarter? A fat quarter. <laughs> Quarter, everybody. <laughs> Not a skinny quarter, a fat, fat quarter. quarter. <laughs> so, um, so make sure that you do comment so that you can get all these threads and one each of these. So that lucky person. And how do we draw? Randomly, of course. We do the random number generator, and then I will announce it after we're done tonight. So that's the big giveaway tonight. And I was so excited to get these threads that they're super cool and super wonderful colors. All right. Um, don't forget, every Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central, we're here. So come and say hi. Of course, we weren't here last week, but we will be here next week and the week after that. Um, most of the time, we're here. So make sure you drop by. If you can't see the videos at the time, you can always look at them later. Um, you just don't get in the, the giveaways if you look at them later. So if you can make it, that's the best part. 
So, so far, does anybody have any questions? Or oh, I'm sure there's tell questions. me what the colors that everybody's loving. <laughs> Got some purple. Purple. Oh, yeah. ooh, I love my purple. Grays and blacks. Blue. Blue. You know. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Joy Betancourt said she thought Christmas was over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never over, Joy. Never over. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love your Christmas. Yeah. And of course, everybody wants to know about the uh, dog bed. The but, dog bed, yes. But please. you got somebody from Queensland, Australia watching too. Hi, <laughs> welcome. I'm glad you're watching. So yeah. you get in the the drawing as well. So make sure that you comment. So great to see you guys. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So one more thing. I just wanted to tell my sister-in-law, Lisa, get better. We, um, she had surgery and she's on the mend, but we want to make sure she's get better. Hi. So anyway, okay. So now I'm going to show you the dog bed. This is what's really cool. Got to put my glasses on for this exciting me. <laughs> is that we made the cover. This unfortunately is not Zed, but we <laughs> did make the cover. There's the dog bed that I designed and how this came about is that as you guys know and if you don't know i'm telling you zed is black and white he is a border collie mix he's not a full bred border collie like this guy but he's a mix so he's a, he's got that black and white and when i saw this fabric and it tells you in the magazine what fabric it is but when i if you want to pan over here honey i'll take a to show it to you they can take a look at it but this fabric is what really inspired me and what really inspired me was this cute little sheepdog there because you know <laughs> we have a sheepdog too <laughs> um the original version is black and white with the um this outside here and i could have brought out the gray but i decided to get the black and white because zed is our prince and he is always either on a dog bed or our bed or the couch or <laughs> he thinks he owns a place, which of course, you know, most dogs do. Now, if you don't have a dog, there is also Jan Regaler, which is actually a friend of mine who lives in here in Rockford. She um, created a cat bed so you can make a cat bed for your cat. And also in on allpeoplequilt.com, there is different sizes so if your dog is not big like ours are you can always do a smaller version or a kitty version so and what it, is this wonderful magazine again it is quilts and more with from american patchwork and quilting nice and it is a special edition so you could you have to buy it at the newsstands and it is on the newsstands i know someone said they couldn't find it today at joanne's they or the other day at Joanne's, they found an old magazine for something else, but um, most of the places have it. So check out sometimes your local grocery store will carry it. But anyway, that's where that is, and we I'm going to kind of show you how to put it together. It's a, actually very simple. It's not a difficult thing to put together, and that's one thing that I do like about the quilts and more is their projects aren't super difficult. So if you wanna do a quick, easy project, there's some really cool projects in here. There is a laptop slash, let's see if I can find it, slash iPad case that I am dying to make. So I might have to make that for one of our Thursday night live events because I think that's really cool. And it, show, it has a zipper in it and those people who have trouble with zippers I'm gonna show you it's really not that bad so I'll show you how to put the zipper in but this is kind of a cool thing so I think maybe that might be one of our next couple weeks we will might do that one um, again if you guys have suggestions on what you want me to talk about make sure that you tell me all right so let's get to our dog bed I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna show you what I did with the dog bed is obviously I made a huge bone that goes in the center and it's a very simply pieced. I just have flip corners, which I'll show you how to do. And then I framed it on the back. What I did was I made it kind of like a pillow so that you could take out the inside 
and wash this cover because I don't know if you have dogs <laughs> or pets or children or anybody that makes a mess, you're gonna need to wash these things. So I made sure that you could take it out and wash it. So that's what I did is I made it so that you could go ahead and take it out. Now what I used was a fusible in here, so a fusible interfacing. Um, after I was done, I thought, you know what, you could actually quilt it too, and it would make it even a little softer. So if you wanted to go for um, the quilted part, I would just go ahead and um, do the top, and I wouldn't quilt the back, I would just quilt the top, and that way it will be nice and soft for them, but I did not on this one. And you don't have to, it's just a suggestion. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to put your bone together, um, and then I'm going to show you how we do the pillow. So I'll put this aside. And to make the bone, the instructions are all in your quilts and more. And check on allpeoplequilt.com to see, like I said, the different sizes. What you're going to do is you're going to need a four and a half by ten and a half inch rectangle for your bone center. With the bone center, I did use a directional print. Now, you don't have to use a directional print. You can use whatever you want. I just like this because it was kind of a gray black and it helped pull in some of the grays in here. And I didn't want to use a solid, especially with dogs. You don't uh, don't want to use anything too solid or they're going to it's going to show everything. We have a cream comforter on our bed. It's not a comforter, it's a coverlet. Mark's rolling his eyes. <laughs> and the reason I have it on the bed, you can, you can look at me while I'm talking. <laughs> the reason I have it on the bed is because it's washable. And I don't want to put one of my good quilts on the bed because we wash them at least once a week with two dogs. And let me tell you a little story. <laughs> the wax rolling his eyes. Be when um, we first got married, Tilly was with me, and he said to me, "He goes, why don't you let Tilly on the bed?" And I said, "Because she's a dog and she'd make a mess." Well, one time I went on a retreat or something, and I come home and guess who's on the bed? Tilly. And guess who's been on the bed ever since? <laughs> Tilly and now Zed. So, so this is why I switched from a quilt to a coverlet. I do have quilts and we do use them, but something that needs to be washed a lot, I do not. But it is cream and I do wash it quite a bit. But anyway, that was just an aside. Sorry about that. I just like to embarrass my husband because he likes to embarrass me. And she does such a good job. <laughs> Okay, so the instructions tell you what size to, to cut this. So it's it's in there. Then you're going to need four squares that are four and a half. And again, it tells you what size to cut them. You're also going to need some squares of your frame fabric. I'm going to open this up so we can kind of follow along as we're going here. <clears throat> so your frame is the paw print on the picture, I'm using these, this little Scotty print. And this little Scotty print is really kind of cute too, because if you wanted to pull out the red instead of using uh, a print like this, you could certainly pull out the red and use that too. So that, I thought that was kind of a cute print too. When I designed this, I went to my uh, local quilt store, actually I went to a store in Crystal Lake, which isn't that far from here, and I, she had a whole bunch of dog fabric and I just bought a bunch because I thought this would be fun to play with. So this was one of the rejects. This is one that I use. So, so that's how, why I have that extra fabric. But anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to cut one and three quarter inch squares of your frame. It's also on the outside of the bed. And I think I have some on the back too. And the reason I went with the darker, again, is because it's for the dog. So I went ahead and um, and I cut the pieces out. They're rectangles and squares, so they're not super complicated. 
um, just follow the instructions in in the magazine and it'll show you how to put how to cut and what to cut and how to put it together but I like to to show you hands-on so I have one of my squares and I'm gonna do one quarter of my bone so this part up here so what I do is I'm going to on all my one and three quarter inch squares of my black I'm gonna draw a diagonal line when I do this I'm going to lay this so my diagonal line goes this way. Don't let it line up this way because I'm going to sew on that line. And I'm going to do that on three of my corners. And I'm going to sew on those lines. So let me grab a couple pins and then I will sew while we're chatting. So while I'm sewing, honey, you want to see if anybody's got any other questions? Oh, I'm sure. Not. Or any other comments? To tease my husband like I do? <laughs> so tell me, everybody, are you hungering down and getting ready for your storm? or? Are you in uh, Australia or Hawaii and, and not having to worry about it <laughs> like we are? Okay, so I did that. Oh, here comes the sheepdog. You wanna show us? Uh, here she is. Say hi to everybody, Tilly. She goes, are you making me a bad? You make Zada bad? You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? <laughs> okay, so I sewed on my lines on all three, just three, do not put it on the fourth. So you want three. And then what you're going to do is you're going to press it. And I'm going to use my cool Oliso iron. And again, when you press, you want to set your seams. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, um, American Patchwork and Quilting is doing a... Um, a series. Are they still doing the series? I think. I no, I think for Christmas they did a series. And if you go on their Facebook Live or Facebook account, um, they will have a bunch of them, just like we do. We keep them forever. So check them out. But she has one I'm pressing that I thought was excellent. So if you ever get a chance, go check it out because she tells you why we do things, um, how to press. She goes over a lot of stuff. And um, if you do, say tell Lindsay that I sent you over and we say hi because she's a real sweetheart okay so remember how we're gonna press so my iron wasn't that hot so I'm gonna push it out okay so we've got our three sides so let's go back over to the cutting table and I'm gonna do that for all four of these. Now notice when I put this together that I have my one fourth corner that does not have the flip corner. Now if you're using a non-directional print in here, you don't have to worry too much about which way, where you put the three corners on. But if you do have a directional print like I do, you want to make sure that you lay it out and put them in the correct corners because you don't want one over here because that's the middle of your bone and you don't want your background in the middle of your bone. So once you have those done, then you're going to take your two and a half by ten and a half inch rectangle of your black. So these should have corners, all four corners. So you're going to sew those together, those together these three pieces together and then this together and you will get your center of your bone. I'm going to grab this again so we can see. So see I've got my three flip corners, my two pieces together, my length here and then my two pieces so that creates your your center bone. Then what you'll do is you're going to add pieces on the side and the top and bottom so you're framing your little bone 
And then what you'll do is if you do have a directional print like I do here, you want to make sure that you cut these correctly. <coughs> so your side pieces, so all your dogs are going in the same direction or whatever that you've, you've decided to use. And then these going this way. So if you do have a directional print and it only, I don't know how much it asks for, let me look here. Um, okay, so it does ask for a yard at one and one eight, and that's also because I did use it for the back, so you should have plenty to be able to cut. But if you decide you wanna use something else for the back, just make sure you have plenty to cut your lengths for your, um, your border here. Then you come back with your other border, which is um, the same as your bone frame. And then what you're gonna do is I'm gonna take this out out. I'm sure everything will go flying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tilly's like, what's that? <laughs> and I will tell you, I got this, um, what is this called? Cushion, I don't foam know, hat. foam, foam piece. Mm -hmm. I ordered it off of um, Walmart. You can get it pretty much anywhere. You can get them to cut to size. This one, I believe, is 24, 20 by 36 by two. Yes, I'm struggling and nobody's helping me. <laughs> He's laughing at me instead of helping me and it's hot in here. <laughs> I'm getting the rolled eyes tonight. <laughs> Woo, they all went falling. Don't worry, the threads are fine, everybody. <laughs> okay. So, what I did was, there we go, should have done this before, huh? Alright, so I, I created a piece and I flipped it over so it covers my fusible interfacing and then what I did was I overlapped it and again the instructions will tell you how to do this just in case you're not sure what what I'm doing here and then what you're gonna do is you sew it together all the way around so you have a right sides together just like you're making a pillow and then on the corner you're gonna measure down two inches and you're going to create your um, baggy bottom or your corner piece. So that's where you get your height. So that's how you do that. I did that over here, so on all four corners. Then once you have that done, I have my four corners. So once you have that done, you can trim this. I just left it, you can trim it if you want. You're going to, now I gotta do this in reverse. I am not putting the pillow back in. <laughs> you can come back out, and like I said, you can take your pillow out and wash it, and then you can always press it back in place. And like I had mentioned earlier, if you wanna quilt it instead of um, using that fusible interfacing, that's fine. I just went ahead and quilted it, but it's nice because, again, you have that, that you can slip your pillow in there, and you can take it out and wash it, and then you have your bed, your dog bed, once you have that pillow in. So if you have any questions about it, let me know. I can help you walk through it. If not, um, then great. I hope someone tries it and I'd love to see pictures. I'd love to see pictures of what everybody's doing. And let's see, okay, don't forget, you want to comment, tell me what your favorite color to quilt with is, and you can tell me what your favorite color is, if it's the same or something else. Uh, like, share, and make sure you, you uh, watch every Thursday night. Oh yeah, and don't forget Courtyard. This will be on the website. 
I don't believe I have it up yet. It might be on the regular fabrics, but this is Courtyard and um, it will be on the PDFs and I will make sure that it's up there. So if you're interested in this quilt, this is a fun quilt. This is an easy quilt to do and I love how you get that barn raising effect using it. Um, the block is just a, this is my block here and it is a log cabin chain. So basically what you're doing is just making a log cabin and adding your chains in there and then you're getting that light and dark effect. So I'm using a red on the black and a black on the red. So, so that's how you do it. So giveaway. Oh, don't forget comment so you can get your awesome giveaway. Um, and then remember the two fat quarters that you will get with them. I think I dropped them by accident. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> by accident. Um, so you'll get two fat quarters plus the thread. So make sure you comment about your favorite color and I will pick a winner and send those to you. So, um, and thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll be back next week and we'll find it and enjoy. Bye.